Have you bought yourself a set of Callaway Paradigm irons this year? And have you just noticed that there is a new set of tailor-made P790s that have been released? Are you worried? Should you be worried? And should you have in fact held on and bought the P790s? <sighs> right, I need myself a Paradigm and uh, I need myself a P790. We're going to have a good look today at these two clubs in detail. It's going to be that old-fashioned head-to-head. It's just going to be two seven irons with Trackman switched on. We're going to have a look at all the different breakdowns in terms of data, what separates these two clubs. But before we go any further, I think we've got to at least start with that old traditional, how do these two things compare in terms of looks? Now, this was nearly an element of the review that I started to uh, omit because at the end of the day, my opinion on how two irons look, well, it's not really going to play any part in your decision making process but uh, I'll give you my thoughts anyway and more so in these two because they are so so different even though the sort of makeup of the two irons in terms of a hollow bodied iron is the same so they're definitely in the same category but very very different I'll put the paradigm on screen for you now and just give me your thoughts on the way this thing looks hollow bodied irons no cavity whatsoever there's a sort of full plate inserted in the back there that's an element of i don't know what it is plastic or whatever um, make your opinion on that one and then i'm going to show the p790 well the p790 has got i think a slightly more premium finish to it it's a, a satin brush satin look if you like and it's very much streamlined with the P770s and also the new MG4 wedges. Whereas there's not quite that same sort of um, look throughout a whole set of paradigms in the, in, in the fact that there's no wedges that sort of fit into this exact same lineup as well. So I think for me, what TaylorMade have done particularly well in the looks department is giving you the ability to mix and match sets up including your wedge lineup as well and have a very much streamlined look through the bag and that for me is the first separator between the two sets of irons from a visual perspective but not necessarily individual looks just that option to get that look throughout the whole bag now i don't always get involved in sort of the pricing of products i don't you know tell people how to spend their money but this is a sort of head-to-head -head. and there's a noticeable difference between the two in terms of price so i think it's important i'll put those on screen for you now because i'm not exactly sure the numbers so i won't quote a figure but this is certainly sub one thousand pound a set and they are not in terms of this was paradigm by the way that is p790 so that's you know that's a huge factor to uh, consider i'm going to hit a ball and talk about the next thing which is sound and feel Maybe before I do that, the one thing I've just noticed, I've missed out the kind of profile in terms of from above. And it is a real noticeable difference between the two. The Paradigm is a more compact heel to toe iron, but has a thicker top line, whereas thinner top line on a P790, but heel to toe overall profile bigger. So they're very, very different. And there's that chrome and satin effect between the two. But that's another major consideration for me. Um, it's almost like a kind of, the Paradigm is quite a stubby little um, iron head, if you like. So it looks as though it packs a fair bit of meat, but the top line is perhaps a little bit thicker than, uh, than you'd quite expect. Now, the next bit is sound and feel. Let's see if we can get a decent ball. I say a decent ball, it was a real decent ball, but I got a little bit of mat first. And what I want to try and do is if we can pick up any kind of acoustics in here, I want to give you an idea of how these things sound by comparison. You tell me, will you, down below right now, is does the sound of these things make any difference to you when you're buying a set of irons? Right, that's better. We've got a real solid knock and hopefully you managed to get a real good understanding of how these sound. There's some people who come on and they comment and they sort of say, well, why would anybody buy a set of clubs based on how they sound and feel? They also comment, why would you buy them based on their looks? Well, the thing is for me is that when we get to the end of all this, we'll see what happens in terms of data parameters, how they're split. But in most instances, when you're testing clubs like this, they're often very difficult to split in terms of data, but 
you're then down to individual preferences. So that's why I sort of, you know, I don't want a, a set of irons that perform great but don't look good. And the same in terms of, okay, so that's a good knock as well. Maybe I should have shut up for a bit because we could have listened between the two. Okay, let's play them both side by side for a minute. Now, I don't know, can you pick up any difference? I know that inside here it's very difficult. The acoustics are different from inside than out, but I would say that my comment would be this. Hollow bodied irons, 2017, let's go back to these things, um, the original version of these. I hated the sound of them. They sounded very, very clicky. They were clearly a hollow bodied iron in my opinion. Um, and you got that. There's been a massive improvement in that sort of sound quality. And um, one of the big leaps forward this year in particular has been exactly that. So I'll hit one more with the P790 because I like it in golf balls. Can I tell the difference between them two? No, I can't, I'll be honest with you. I find it very, very similar. Um, same concept, they've got packed full of tungsten. Uh, they're both forged face. They neither sound like a forged iron as I would expect a forged iron to sound like. And are really in a way, I just wish they'd not make reference to it. I don't understand what the forged face brings to the party because it's not a forged iron. It doesn't have a forged iron feel. So um, yeah, that's my opinion. They sound brilliant for a hollow bodied iron, but they're a forged iron. And my opinion on that, I don't think it's ever gonna change. However, huge leap forward in both. There you go, I've said it. Anyway, let's carry on, I think. What happened in terms of performance? Well, the big deal is this. I'm gonna go back to the P790. Apologies, by the way, that we've got no sort of shot tracking that you can see. And uh, I realize I'll keep this short and sweet because I know you like to see where balls are going, but I don't have that software right now. The big difference is this, in terms of what I see on the course. Uh, well, on the course as well, to be honest with you, is P790s launch the ball incredibly high, even with a shot like that, which clearly hit the mat first and wasn't fantastic. And it's a real visible difference. It's um, so much higher in terms of, I need to do a P790 versus P790, the old version, because I can't remember the ball going so high. Seven iron and five iron. And this ball, you know, I mean, look, that's not a criticism again of Paradigms. They, they, they all have done a great job in moving CG placement round. We've all heard about it in recent years, but there is a notable difference between the two. And that is the P790 throws the ball up into orbit. We'll go and watch the individual review because of that and the five iron is tested in that. And I cannot believe how, how high the ball goes. That's where the big improvement has been. Enough waffle. Let's go into the screen, let's have a look at the data and let's see exactly what separates these two in terms of performance in my hands at least. Right, that's it. I think we try and keep these sort of head to heads very simple and straightforward. At the end of the day, there's only so much we can do to sort of help at least point you in the right direction. Um, as I said earlier on, Paradigm, a hugely popular iron for Callaway, and this P790 is no doubt gonna be extremely popular again for TaylorMade. So an obvious head to head. Um, we'll start off, I think what I'll do, as I've done with some previous head to heads I've just filmed, all the data I'll put at an end screen um, so you can sort of pick the bones out of each shot that I've hit. So six with one, seven with the other. Uh, and I'll put right now the sort of comparison in terms of the averages. So let's go with the carry distance. Uh, yeah, let's start with the carry distance. 149.2, uh, 150.7, nothing to split them there. 76.6 <laughs> average club head speed. That's consistent and well done. Uh, with a ball speed of 108.7 and 109.2. I think you can sort of get the gist of where this one's going. Um, 85 peak height, 76 peak height. Well, maybe you didn't get where this one was going. 17.6 launch, 19.4 launch, spin of 5.6, spin of 5.4, descent 43.6 and descent of 46.3. Right, so what's the interesting bit there? Well, it sticks out a mile for me and no doubt you as well. And it starts off from that peak height and launch angle and it's those last four pieces of data which really separate these two and for me 
it was the bit that was the real shock in the test. Maybe not so much as what the P790 did because I've just been, that's been a club that I've recently been reviewing. I've said in each of the reviews, and I've done some head to heads as well, depending on which these come out, but I've commented on each one. The P790 this year has got an extremely high launching ball. They've done an incredible job of not only in the mid irons, but also in the long irons as well of getting the ball launching. Now that's gonna be a big help and it's gonna be a big selling point in my opinion for a lot of average golfers. But they've done it without a loss of distance and without a loss in terms of spin. But what it does, if you combine a launch angle, a peak height, a spin rate, and a land angle, those four last digits, you compare those on a P790 to that of the Paradigm. And for me, you've got a bit of a winner there, to say the least, because that's the key element that I'd be looking for. Carry distance is the same. We're not losing out anything. Ball speed is the same. So you've got, when we're swinging a club in exactly the same speed, we're getting the same ball speed, we're getting the same carry distance, but when that ball is coming into the green, because of that high launch angle, we're coming down at a steep descent angle, and then we've got exactly the same spin number virtually on both. So for me, the ball that's stopping quickest is gonna be that P790. Now that again depends on what it is you're looking for and you want your clubs to do, but often, and you go to a few years back, I think it was 2017, was it, when the first launch of the uh, P790s, that was in an era where there was a lot of criticism about strong lofted irons and how they were um, inconsistent in terms of ball speeds. That's not happened again today. Where they were not stopping on greens because they were so uh, low in terms of spin. Well, I think we've got to a point now where those things have changed significantly. I think most golfers now realize that as well. So you can get help with ball speed with that stronger lofted iron, but you're only getting the same carry distance, but it's those end parameters that are key. Like I said, you can look through the individual shots at the end and maybe you can see a different story than the one I'm seeing, but for me, that is without doubt the key takeaway from all this. And it's something that you have got to look at what ball flight you want. And again, there was different shafts in there, so that's another consideration. Wouldn't necessarily see that as a negative in terms of that elevate shaft being in a paradigm, you'd expect it to be, it's there to launch the ball high. So I wouldn't necessarily think that the shaft would play such a part, but these are all the things that when you go into your, um, your custom fit, you've got like the paradigm you've got the new t200 from Titleist. you've got this club obviously you've got some options there from Strixon in that hollow body category as well test them all and make sure you get a breakdown of the key figures and the key parameters that are key to your game and where they can help but for me the biggest deal and the biggest separator is just how high the P790 is launching the ball because, okay, on seven iron, but then five iron was doing exactly the same as well, sending this thing into orbit, super impressive. But there are other things to take into account, those sound and feel issues, the looks issue there, and the cost issue as well. So they're all gonna be things that you're gonna factor in. But hopefully we've done enough that uh, we can at least show you from my perspective, how we would separate these two irons from at least what Trackman says. Right. Thanks as ever for watching, really appreciate your support on this channel and of course on testing the tips and uh, if you're new to the channel in any way, don't forget that that channel is in existence, testing the tips, go and check that one out and give that one a sub as well, it's getting lots of love right now and uh, absolutely flying, uh, so I appreciate that. Right, I'm all done, see you soon.